Hello and welcome to the Boys Upstairs show. As you can tell, I'm in my dorm room right now. Uh, crazy snowstorm going on outside. Tony's experiencing it. Sam's experiencing it. Jake is not experiencing it in Florida, but I cannot drive right now. Carter's not have four-wheel drive. Would be a death sentence to get out there on the roads right now. Um, so I'm doing the show from here. But it is championship weekend. It is the Boys Upstairs show. So the Chiefs are going to play the Bengals this week. A lot of people are going to be taking the Bengals this week. Uh, points, seven and a half. That's a lot of points, as Sam would say. Uh, Chiefs are hot right now. They are wagon. Uh, they can turn on the switch whenever they want to. Uh, Bengals are a very, very pass-heavy team. They have a good running game as well, though. I like uh, a lot of points to be scored in this game. The total is 54, which is healthy, but we'll go to Sam. Um, I'm glad you started taking words out of my mouth with um, seven and a half is a lot of points because it is a lot of points. But I don't even care. The Bengals are going to win this game, in my opinion. I think the Bengals are a team of destiny. All right. Niners are a team of destiny because the first – John Madden's first Super Bowl was Bengals-Niners. And um, I actually have a two-team parlay set up for that. And I'm also going to go the first half over 26 and a half here. Um I'd like a lot of points to be scored. I think it's the earlier game tomorrow. So yeah. weather won't be as much of an issue. I don't think this giant storm has hit the midland of Kansas City. I got two anytime TD scores for us today. And I'm going to go Tyler Boyd to get a TD in this game. And I know everyone's going to want like Jamar Chase uh, or someone on the Chiefs, Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey, Terry Kill, obviously. But I'm going Tyler Boyd because in an important game like this, the defense, Steve Spagnuolo, game planning against your best weapons, Joe Mix and Jamar Chase. Look to see some of those guys, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, getting some receptions, getting some of those uh, sneaky plays we saw from Gabriel Davis last week when Stephon Diggs wasn't available. So, yeah, I like Tyler Boyd to get a TD here as well. Just so everyone knows, Sam's hungover right now. So he, he woke up about six and a half minutes ago, but he's he's rallying for the show right now. So that – Sentence took a lot out of me. And it was a huge run on sentence that I just said. <laughs> if Joe Burrow, check this out. Dude. Greatest college season ever. And then his first full year starting in the NFL, if he gets to the Super Bowl, that would be one of the greatest three-year stretches in the history of the sport. I don't care what anybody says, especially in Cincinnati. Oh, my God, they were an awful team, and now he's getting them a game away from the Super Bowl, and I hope that he gets them there. I'm going to pick the Bengals plus seven and a half. That's my only reasoning that I don't want the Chiefs to win. That's why I'm picking them. I also like the under 54 and a half. Last week, the Chiefs and the Bills ran the score out the last couple of minutes. The Bengals have been kind of slow. I think that even though they believe in their heart of hearts, Joe Burrow can duel Mahomes, I think it's going to be a big – game on the ground for Joe Mixon. They're going to want to milk the clock, limit the Chiefs, the amount of times they have the ball in their possessions. I'm going to take the under, and I'm also going to take Joe Burrow over one and a half touchdown passes. Might be to Tyler Boyd or Higgins or Chase. I'm not going to take a touchdown score, but I like him to get at least two TD passes. That is all I have to say. Don't my want to win. Don't my like him. Saying, my heart's saying, uh, I mean, as you can tell, I was I was wrong every game last week. I picked the opposites of every single <laughs> game. So, but I'm going to take yeah, the you Chiefs. Yeah, you tried. I'm going to take the Chiefs minus seven and a half. Uh, it's like I said last week, I don't know. The Bengals, this is a sort of miracle stretch. They're way better than I thought, a lot sooner than I thought. And I don't know. I just think Kansas City, they got that huge win last week uh, coming back. 13 seconds, more than enough time. Um, I'm also going to take Jamar Chase, two touchdowns. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, that's a hot one. Never do that. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. The man's a baller. Uh, he always seems to find the end zone. Joe Burrow's always looking for him. But yeah. 
Uh, this is the first time since what year the Bengals are in the AFC Championship game? Do you guys know? Uh, 1988. Like 80, 88. Yeah. 88. When they played, um, the, I don't remember who they played, but whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Got I it. don't have that stat, but 88 was the last time they were in the game. Uh, pretty wild. As Tony said, Joe Burrow, unbelievable. Um, he is a guy, unfortunately, in the Steelers division, so we're going to have to get a guy because um, he's a guy. And uh, for this game, opposite to what Jake said, I am taking the over 54 and a half. Um, a little bit of that is just because I, I think that the Chiefs like can literally turn it on whenever they need to, even if there's only 13 seconds left. But the Bengals are just very, very good on offense. And the Chiefs aren't that great defensively. They're decent. But I think that, like, as you saw last week, like teams can run up score on them. And then Chiefs offense just is able to match it. So because of that, over 54 and a half. On the side, though, taking the Chiefs. Um, everyone was saying that they don't want the Chiefs to win, but uh, I don't want the Bengals to win. I'm much more doing not like, like the Bengals over the Chiefs. I don't like either of them, but I would rather the Chiefs win than the Bengals. Um, I don't even think the Bengals are going to cover plus seven and a half. I think it's going to be a little bit of a wake-up call. Like, obviously, they've already overachieved, so it's not like they can do any wrong at this point, but they're a little bit out of their league in this game. The Chiefs are the Chiefs, and – I'm also going to be taking Jarek McKinnon anytime touch. Jarek McKinnon anytime touchdown. He played wow. unbelievable. Yeah, he played unbelievable against the Steelers. And the Chiefs just seem to keep finding guys that are good, like that no one knows who they are, and the, they just become weapons. And they like know how to fit guys into specific roles in their offense and do like crazy scripted plays. And it's unbelievable to watch. And I like Jarek McKinnon touchdown. Um, and then the best bet in sports, Patrick Mahomes over rushing yards. This week it's twenty eight and a half. They keep putting it in the 20s, and he keeps getting above that. Like, every week it's gone over the past couple of weeks in the playoffs. I've taken it every week. Um, so I will give a, go ahead and give that free money bet to you over 28 and a half rushing yards. I like that. Um, and with that, we will go to wait, prime time. Wait, wait, wait. I think, I think you were letting your uh... – your Steelers fandom come out a little bit when you're hating on the Bengals. I think the Bengals, the Bengals are good. You're, you, I think you're getting a little too heartfelt. Hey, no, 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 believe me, believe me, believe me. I will. I have no shame in admitting that I was wrong about the Bengals. We, everyone was really hot on the Bengals that one week, and then they lost to the Jets, and then they're like, okay, Bengals aren't actually anything. They're just the Bengals. They had a good week. The Bengals are a good team. Bengals have a good team. There's just a couple reasons why I don't like them, and because of that, maybe it is clouding my judgment, but. The Chiefs are just a wagon right now. And, you know, like they took Steelers out. So it's not like I have any reason to like like them, but it yeah. is what it is. Wait, I have one. I, I totally forgot. I just have one more thing to add to my card. I want Joe Burrows over on passing yards, 299. Okay. Please, that, that, Let's I think also be real about this game. Uh, this is nothing against Patrick Mahomes. This is all personal against Jackson Mahomes and Pat. Yeah, yeah. And his wife. I don't like his wife. He can clip that. I do not like Patrick Mahomes' wife. The entire Mahomes family is just such a fuck up. You can clip that too. Except Patrick. Well, yeah, except him. No, Pat, Patrick's a great guy, but uh, he, the his surrounding crew though. If he does one like, more commercial, if he does one more commercial, I'm out on it. I'm already out on him. But there, there's a school of thought that would you know, kind of makes sense where Patrick Mahomes was like, okay, I'm going to have the most insufferable brother of all time. And my wife is going to be kind of a bitch. So that will just make everybody like me more and feel bad for me. And like, I honestly don't know anyone that doesn't like Patrick Mahomes. So it kind of worked out. I don't. I just think people give him too much credit. Like for example, the last drive against the Bills, everyone was like, 13 seconds. That was amazing. Dude, the Bills literally gave him a free yeah. 50 yards. He didn't – every single quarterback in the NFL could have made those two throws he made on that drive. There and were that was – There Chelsea was not a play, Bills yeah. defender within five yards of Kelsey and Tyreek on those two passes. It was the worst defensive scheme I've ever seen in my fucking life. Ever. You think Kirk Cousins is getting the boys in field goal range there, Jake? It, yes. If the Bills play that defense, yes. I think <laughs> the Chiefs' backup quarterback could have gotten him in field goal range. Chad Watch Henney. the first play. They give him a free 50 yards. True. That's also because, you know, like Tyree Kill and Kelsey are kind of hard to guard, too. No, can no I say but they were playing They were playing sideline defense. Like, like they true. didn't have any timeouts. Like, the Chiefs had timeouts, and the Bills were playing, like, sideline defense. Like, they were just going to try to run, like – 
you know, like plays to get out of bounds, but they didn't need to get out of bounds. So yeah, like, that's, it, yeah, that's what I was saying. So the seven, the San Francisco 49ers are trying to turn a one week trip to Los Angeles into a three week vacation in Los Angeles. The Rams are minus three and a half. The total is 45 and a half. We will go ahead and start with Tony on this game. Um, I've been a 49ers hater, you know, this whole playoffs, but uh, I'm starting to believe a little bit in their defense is legit. Uh, talk about somebody who got in 100% on their homework and did absolutely nothing was Jimmy G in the Packers game. Uh, dude should have thrown four picks if the Packers were paying any attention. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to stick with Matt Stafford. I'm going to take the Rams minus three and a half. Uh, I'm going to take over 45 and a half too. I feel like that's that's sort of in that range where I, there's going to be more touchdowns than anything. Uh, and I'm also going to take a sleeper touchdown score by Matt Stafford. Dude has two rushing touchdowns this playoffs. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. He's a big QB sneak at the one yard line guy. Oh, huge QB sneak guy. He's pretty good at it, too. He's a big dude. He's a big fella. Yeah. He's got some meat on his bones. Sam? Yeah, you can kick it over to me. Um, I've picked in the middle of the season the Rams to win the Super Bowl two years in a row. This would be the second year. Um, I just like – they're so good. And this is a huge prove-it game for Sean McVay. Yep. He is owned by Kyle Shanahan. I don't think he's beaten him, like, ever. Not and once ever. What? Not once ever. No, yeah, he hasn't beaten Kyle Shanahan, and Kyle Shanahan just owns him for some reason. I don't know why, but it is a big prove game for Sean McVay, and he's got to you got to yield results sometimes. It's uh, it's something to be said about. I don't want to dish any blame here, but like you don't want to be that Aaron Rodgers that can only win games in the regular season, and it is a flop when you come to playoff time. Um, shout out Matt Lafleur, but. Uh, yeah, it's, he's got to prove it. I mean, it just comes down to that. That's literally like my only note on this game. And Cooper Cup and Odell as weapons. And Cam Akers was kind of rough the last game. But, I mean, you've got so much to work with around there, even like Tyler Higby. I don't. I, I am taking the under here, actually, because I feel like this is – it's a kind of a trap almost with 45 and a half. And um, I just like – I don't think there's going to be that many points scored. I think there might be a lot of field goals. Um from what we're going to see, a lot of touchdowns probably. But, uh, yeah, I do like the Rams minus three and a half here. I think the Rams are going to win this game. And the Rams are probably going to win the Super Bowl. If the Niners win this game, the Bengals are going to win the Super Bowl. If the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, I might jump off a cliff. <laughs> but um, I'm also going to take an Elijah Mitchell touchdown here. Oh. Um, Elijah Mitchell, I didn't even, like, know who he was coming into the season, really. And then I kept seeing him always with these, like, first touchdown props with good odds, and he kept getting it. So I am going to take Elijah Mitchell TD. Um, so Sam, you stole Elijah Mitchell TD off my card. Uh, um, so, take it with but, me. Let's ride it. Yeah, Let's ride yeah, it together. I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to go on that together. We're going to ride that together, ride Elijah Mitchell together. Um, I'm going to be taking the 49ers with the points. I'm also going to be taking the 49ers outright at plus three and a half. Um, I, as Tony said earlier, it's team of destiny. Uh, I've been saying that for a couple of weeks now. Um, and I, I don't know. I think Jimmy G is just saying, fuck everybody. And I'm a starting quarterback in the NFL. And obviously, like, he hasn't played great in the postseason, but they've been able to find a way to win. Um, and that it's team game. comes down to that at the end of the day. Uh, uh, in opposite to what Sam said, in opposition to what Sam said, I actually placed a Chiefs Super Bowl future yesterday uh, at plus 125 to win the Super Bowl. Uh, plus money next week, probably not going to be plus money. So, Hop on that this week if you want to. Um, they're not going to be plus money next week because they're not going to yeah, be there. That's what I'm saying. Um, so take them right now. Um, I think it's going to be Chiefs 49ers Super Bowl. I really do. Uh, I think that's just what's going to come down to. In this game versus the Rams, 49ers like to run the ball. They like to control the pace. Rams like to throw the ball and get their pass rushers going. Um, you know, And if the Rams are able to score early, then this is going to be a game controlled by the Rams. But I, I think the 49ers are going to be able to control the pace of the run. And I, I like the under in this game as well, under 45 and a half. I think it's going to be a 49ers dominant game, Debo Samuel dominant game. I'm not taking Debo touchdown because it's not plus money. Um, but Elijah Mitchell TD, 
49ers plus three and a half, 49ers money line under 45 and a half. Jake. All right. All right. All right. Let me spice things up here. I got Rams spread. I got the over and I have an Odell touchdown. I understand Shanahan kind of has Sean McVay's number, but it's the third time they're playing this year. I'm rolling with a law of averages saying that the Rams will beat them one time. However, the 49ers have a really, really, really good team, top to bottom, except at quarterback. And I would like this to be a poll. Get your guys' feedback here. If I was Kyle Shanahan, I would start Trey Lance. I'm dead serious. Let me explain why. I do not believe it's possible in this league to win three or more playoff games, especially road playoff games, with below average quarterback play. I can attest to that. So my point is, if Trey Lance plays and he plays awful, that's fine because they were screwed either way. If Trey Lance plays well, they might win the Super Bowl. If he was really deserving of being the third overall pick, and we can have a debate about that because I don't know. Because he he's only thrown like 20 passes in the last two and a half years, it feels like. But if he really was deserving, then I think he could have thrown for 180 yards and a pick against Dallas. And I think he could have thrown for 125 yards against the Packers last week. And they would have won either way. So if I was Kyle Shanahan, if the, if you really traded up all, if you really give up all those assets to get him, I would play him right now because I think they actually could with Jimmy G beat the Rams. I think they could, but I don't think there's any chance in hell they can beat the Chiefs. And the 49ers should know my my reasoning because it literally happened to them two years ago. They played the Vikings below average quarterback play. They won them. They played the Packers, below average quarterback play, they won. Then they played the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, and when they needed Jimmy G to throw the ball, he couldn't deliver. If, if Kyle Shanahan wants to win the Super Bowl, I would start Trey Lance. I'd rest my case. So, yeah. so Jake. Here's Matt Sam. Can you tell me who was the Bears' starting quarterback in the last Super Bowl they played? Yeah. The last Super Bowl they played? Yes. It was well, – uh, Well, the last one they played, it was Rex Grossman. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. That, that is who I was getting to. Jake, Rex Grossman. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was out of the NFL within two years of that Super Bowl. Ravens won the Super the, Bowl with Trent Bears, Dilfer, too. Like, yeah, the Bears got to that Super Bowl. They had elite special teams play, and they had a number one defense. You need at least a number one offense, special teams, or defense in order to get to the Super Bowl. The 49ers have that defense. They pretty much can stop any offense, from what I can tell. But – when it comes down to it, you know, they got to score points. Yeah, Jimmy G hasn't been the guy, but they found a way to win, and sometimes that's all you need. But, like, I've taken the Rams this week because I think that run's going to come to an end. It always seems to come to an end, but still. Jimmy G just wins football games. Like, yeah. he, he wins. It doesn't it, – it, Not Super how they Bowls how when he needs to throw the ball. Sorry. And you think you think Trey Lance is the answer to any kind of problem that they have? Sam, Jimmy G against the Packers last week was 11 of 19 for 130 yards and a pick. Do but they won the football Trey game. Lance could have done that? Mm. In Jake. that game, no. He wouldn't. Jake. I think he could have done that or better, and they would have won either way. Jake, did you see the video of – Robbie Gold and Jimmy Garoppolo walking off the field in Lambeau, just yeah, sharing sharing a beautiful moment amongst brothers. Like that locker room is fully bought in on Jimmy G. You can't Brother. like quantify that. Like if they just Jimmy got, G's the leader. If they got rid of their like their leader right now, what kind of message would that send? Like, yeah, we're worried we're gonna lose, so we're just gonna bench First our quarterback. The leader's Fred Warner. It's not Jimmy G. They know Jimmy G's gone. I don't think the locker room buys into him. I really don't. I don't. I, I, especially I, don't, Kyle I, I don't think that your team can rally that much and beat the Packers and get to this point. If you don't believe in your starting quarterback, like you have to have some sort of buying into your quarterback at that point, after being Packers in Lambeau, like being Cowboys in Dallas, like two teams that everybody thought had a chance to win the Super Bowl this year. No one gave 49ers a shot to win the Super Bowl. I think you got to stick with your guy at this point. And like what Tony said, like all the teams you can think about that have had like really good defenses and like, below average to average quarterbacks like Ravens twice, Joe Flacco, Trent Dilfer, 
Peyton Manning with the Broncos was very well beyond his prime. Their defense was unbelievable. They won the Super Bowl. Like the Bears with Rex Grossman, like if you have a really good defense and a running game that can control the clock, your quarterback can be average and you I can get a job. I don't back. think their defense is as good as any of those teams you just said. Like that's my point. I think like so I said that I don't think it's possible to win three playoff games with below average quarterback play. I think I forgot to say this. Unless you have a historically great defense. 85 Bears, 2000 Ravens, 2002 Bucks. The 49ers defense is really good. I don't think it's historically great. I just well, don't. This is this is I mean like you write your story as the season progresses like if they're able to shut down one of the best offenses in the league, the Rams, high-powered offense last week they shut down the MVP of the league and the best receiver in the league and the week before that they shut down the Cowboys who I mean pretty good offense like if they're able to stop the Rams this week, or you I mean, just gave the Cowboys a compliment. <laughs> well, well, I was That's using that to help my case. Cowboys compliment you by ever way, said. Yeah, week. true. Well, by the way, uh, we haven't really talked about it. And I'll just say it briefly, just to get my point across. Like I did give out to the public that the Cowboys were going to lose in the first round in probably week five or six. So I just want to say I told you so there. But you yeah, I think good offense. I've never heard the, of yeah. That. If the 49ers can win this game and get to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl, then the 49ers defense becomes a historic defense. That's how they are remembered at that point. Tommy, I'm asking you a serious question right now. If it's Niners Chiefs, as you're predicting, who who do you think is going to win the game? I already told you I have a futures bet on the Chiefs. I'm not now, saying that the 49ers. there's any possible chance Jimmy G can outplay Patrick Mahomes in that game? Yeah, I played Aaron Rodgers. So you just dance around my question like Donald Trump. So do you think – I'm thinking – here's what I'm telling you. Here are the facts. In this game, 49ers win. However, I have a Super Bowl future on the Chiefs. If it comes to that, I think Chiefs beat the 49ers. But in this game, I'm taking the 49ers outright money line. No need for the points, but I'll take them too. I would play Trey Lance. Imagine if you're Kyle Shanahan and you're like, okay – we own the Rams. We've never lost to them. So our formula clearly works. So let's change it completely. Like, you can't exactly. do that. Well, How I would don't... you fix what's not broken? Well, well, I'll explain. I just told you, they can beat the Rams with Jimmy G. I don't think they can beat the Chiefs with him. And I think Kyle Shanahan knows that. Well, I, I would know. put... I, don't know I would they, play Trey Lance and get him warmed up for the Super Bowl. So, so know. where where does your <laughs> that is such your, a bold take? Where does your <laughs> line of thinking end? Like you can't win three games with Jimmy G in the playoffs. So then, like, say you start Trey Lance, you win this week. Do you stick with Trey Lance or do you go back to Jimmy G at that point? Like, how would that make sense to then go back to Jimmy G? I think they should have been starting Trey Lance since Week Eight, but they didn't for some. They're reason. in the NFC Championship game though. Well, they're, that's as far as they're going to get. Listen, it was third and eight in Packer territory. They get a first down. They're in field goal range. And you know how much faith Kyle Shanahan had in Jimmy G? He called an inside handoff to a wide receiver. Got the job done. He doesn't trust him at all. He trusts Debo. At all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, they, they, they have their, like, you know, no one thought the 49ers were going to win the Super Bowl this year. They have surprised everybody. And clearly their formula has worked to get them to this point. Every game is a matchup-based deal. And who knows how this game goes. They're pretty polar opposite in terms of what they like to do. So it's just going to be able to – who can control the game. And I like the, the 49ers defense. So Matthew Stafford, I, I like Matthew Stafford a lot. I just have a bad feeling that it is like – just always going to culminate in him being sad walking off the field. I like, I hate to say that, but that just seems like how it goes every time for him. Back to back, back to back games. He hasn't turned it over. Like law of averages. I doubt he goes three straight games without a turnover. That kind of nerve, yeah. that kind of makes me nervous. Championship show. Jay, thank you for being here. Tony, thank you for being here. Sam, thank you for being here. Pleasure. Uh, Seamus, thank you for you. Uh, everything you do doesn't Shout go out. unnoticed. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great weekend uh, watching football, and uh, hopefully next weekend I can get back in the studio. But who knows? Uh, anything you guys want to say? 
Take the Bengals. Go Burrow. Please let me live life without hearing about Patrick Mahomes' family for the next two weeks. Please, brother, I need it.